I'm happy to welcome you um, for this uh, our special tutorial that you were waiting for a few hours or days or weeks or years, I don't know. Um, we'll spend uh, about three hours uh, together and uh, I hope that you had no problem. If you are here, it seems that you don't have any problem with the Zoom and uh, don't have any problem with Slack. Obviously, everybody said hello on the Slack, so that's perfect. So now we can start speaking about uh, maps and everything. Um, it's not that, uh, if there are some problem with my microphone, do not hesitate to, to say it. You can write in the Slack. Uh, feel welcome to to speak together also uh, inside the inside the chat room and uh, if there are some problem with uh, our uh, connection i may ask you to to shut down your videos just to 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 see if it's okay but for now that's good i'm happy to see some faces if you do not want to open your video i'm okay with it too I will just ask you to, to close the, to shut down the microphone, which is okay for everyone for now. So perfect, you followed all the instructions. So we can, we can start to, to play with uh, this platform. So I will share my screen. Ah. Yeah, so um, I just take a picture of all of you, and if you don't want to be in on the picture, I will uh, remove that uh, just for the communication on Twitter and everything you know. So just if say you, hi. <laughs> if you do not want to come uh, to be on the picture, you can just shut down your video now. Just say hi, and pictures should be good now. I think. And I will share it on Slack so that we can all see your face. And if you're happy with that, we will be able to go. If you want to do another picture because you're not uh, nice on this picture, maybe we can do something at the end when you are totally exhausted and you will see that your faces will be worse than this one. Um, before and after, spatial <laughs> yeah. change, spatial change. Very appropriate. Yeah, so uh, let's me share my screen uh, with this, up, uh, this one. Okay. Up. So here is my uh, my uh, project on Santa Cruz. So I hope all of you uh, were able to connect to this uh, Santa Cruz. I just verify that I do not have email of people with problems. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so I need to send an email to the captioners. Uh, 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 can, Shell, uh, maybe can you send, I put that in the admin part, an, an invitation to, to this person inside Slack so that we can discuss on Slack. I don't see. Ah, okay, I need to add some captioners, right? Um, I, I think, where. sorry, yeah. I think as you do that, maybe we can introduce ourselves. Yeah, so yeah, that we start sure. with, so, yeah okay. Um, Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Shell Nays. I'm so glad to be here. I'm part of the co organizers of Nairobi R, and we are very happy to be hosting this tutorial. We are meant to do this with. Kampal R, but um, this, their representative, I'm not sure if he's here yet, I guess he's running late. Um, and Nairobi R is just any other Ariza group. Our idea was is to always um, like make sure people are learning R and like people are getting um, the most out of R, which is what we've been doing for one year. We co-organized this with two of my brothers. One is Chris, who is on this call, and the other one is um, Keegan. So Nairobi R is part of Africa R, which is now a larger community for R users in Africa. And our goal is just to help people um, develop communities within themselves, like R communities within themselves, uh, where they can meet 
and learn R and interact with amazing people like the Think R team and other many people um, globally. And we are so happy to be doing this. I think just a few reminders, maybe Sebastian has mentioned one. Um, I hope we are all good with Slack at this point. Um, if myself and Chris, we have an M uh, tagged on our name. So in case you have an issue with anything, absolutely anything, even something you will think is small and maybe you're afraid to ask, I promise you we are the sweetest people ever or so we tell ourselves. So <laughs> please feel free to um, reach out. And if, you, if you're not um, comfortable asking questions publicly and you want to DM, we are happy to do so. Also, we want you people to, if you've not done this, please take a minute and go through the code of conduct. This is a very safe space for everyone. We don't want people to go through um, harassment issues, stalking issues, and all the bad things that can go wrong on a Zoom call. So please, please, please um, read that. And if anything happens whatsoever, anything that offends you, please feel free to DM myself or um, Chris or anyone, any of the presenters, um, if they'll not be presenting. Again, this is a very friendly tutorial and I promise you this is the best team ever. I'm not blowing my own horn, but <laughs> we are the best team ever. So we hope by the end of the three hours, everyone will be happy, satisfied, and this will be like the best use of your time. I'll give my brother Christopher to um, introduce myself. Oh my God, I really call him Christopher. He's Chris. So anyway, feel free. Thank you, Shell. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh... My name is Christopher Maronga, and um, as Sheila said, I'm also part of the uh, organizers of Nairobi R. I'm pretty sure everyone is uh, very excited to, to be taking this particular tutorial today. And uh, I think Sheila has actually given all the information about Nairobi R and what we actually, our role in during this tutorial. So feel free to reach out uh, in case you need some, some help. And uh, so finally, probably I just want to take this opportunity as well to Thank, sincerely thank our instructors because uh, I know it takes time to put together a tutorial like this one. So thank you, thank you, uh, our instructors, and uh, I hope you all enjoy at the end of the tutorial. Thank you. Good, thank you very much. Um, there are still some people who don't have their credential. So, Diana. Uh, I'll do it in a, in a few minutes. Uh, if you are already, Diana, maybe you are here already inside the, I don't see any. Yes, Diana. I'm here. Yes, you're here. Okay. So um, I will just do the, the presentation. And uh, when uh, Jakub is starting to, to, to present the, the, the job, I will give you your, your credentials. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so thank you, uh, Shell, for the introduction. And as she said, of course, you're welcome here. It's a safe place. You can discuss with us. You can discuss with everybody. And if you have any problem, any problem, just do not hesitate to to speak to privately or publicly inside the the chat room of the of the Slack. So uh, let me put that in the bigger screen. So you, you all have the, the, the slides too. Huh? Okay, so you can, if it's too small for your screen, you can also follow it on your, on your computer. Um, first things first, uh, note that uh, all this material will be available on my uh, GitHub uh, account at the end of the, the course. And you will have all the answers to the exercises you will have during these three hours. So if you cannot finish some exercises, do not worry. You will be able to have uh, everything at the, at the end and, and take it uh, later to finish it. Um, so this tutorial is, uh, is possible uh, thanks to collaboration between uh, Doris, Jakub, and I. Uh, We've worked a lot of hours to prepare you this uh, small tutorial, 
but uh, we are very happy to to, to present it uh, to you. Uh, it's also facilitated by uh, Shell and Christopher with uh, Africa Air, Kampala Air, and uh, Nairobi Air, and also facilitated by SyncR, who provide us uh, this uh, e-learning platform with, as you already saw, it a part with the exercises and a part with the R Studio that you may already know. Um, I am part of uh, SyncR, so I am uh, Sébastien Rochette, and I'm doing data analysis and uh, tutorials at SyncR. And maybe, Doris, you can introduce yourself in a few words too, and then Jakub, that you know is speaking. Sure. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Doris Scott. And um, I am a GIS librarian and social science data curator at Washington University, St. Louis. Um, really sad that we're not able to uh, meet in St. Louis, but we're going to try to still give you the a St. Louis experience through the exercises. So I'm glad to be here and I'm so happy that everyone's here to learn more about spatial applications um, using R. Thanks, Doris. Jakub, can you say a few words? Yeah, sure. So, hello, everyone. My name is Jakub Novosat. I am an assistant professor at Adam Miskiewicz University in Poznan, Poland. And I'm also a co-author of a book called Geocomputation with R. So, most of my days I spend doing, working with spatial data, visualizing it, processing it, and and creating and, uh, new methods and new R packages. So I hope I hope we spend uh, some time together and and you'll learn uh, some new things with us. <laughs> um, thank you, Doris. Thank you, Jakub. So uh, to continue the, the presentation, and then we will uh, draw some maps. Don't worry, we won't speak for hours without you uh, playing with uh, R and maps. So um, here is the, how we see the planning. So we are uh, three instructors. There are also three facilitators. Uh, you will have three hours tutorial, which is already started. And it will be three parts of it. So the first, first part will be with the presentation, the one I'm doing now. Then you will see how to draw maps with TMAP with Jakub and what are special data in R. Then you will, be, you will see how to read and write spatial vector data and manipulate vector data with the tidyverse with Doris, uh, which is why we asked you before to, to be able to know the deep layer things before coming because uh, we will do something with uh, the tidyverse. And as I open this tutorial, I will also close it with uh, presenting you how to manipulate and do some intersection between special uh, data sets. Uh, we plan to, to divide uh, this part in, in, in three times one hour part. So uh, half of each part will be about uh, presentation and following the slides. So first half part we speak, then you work. And I will uh, break uh, um, the, the, all of you in different uh, breakout rooms. So this will be done uh, totally uh, randomly. And I think I will uh, uh, divide you in uh, five or six uh, different rooms, which means that there won't be uh, an instructor in each room each time, but we will uh, jump between different rooms so that you can ask us some questions. And so if you are stuck, you can first try to speak with the other people who are in the same room, if you like to, or you can ask your question directly on Slack. And if you have very specific question and you really want us to come, just do not hesitate to, to ask, uh, to call us uh, on, uh, on Slack with our, uh, our uh, uh, name. So we are here, we are ready to move between different class, but we want small groups so that we can uh, help you, help working together. And 
uh, maybe it will uh, come up with some good friendship after that, or maybe you won't, you won't uh, want to see these uh, people for another minute, but let's see if we can uh, help each other to, to go through this, uh, this tutorial and this uh, question. Um, yeah, again, there is only thing which is not with the number three, it's number one, it's one repository and you already know about it. Up. Um, as you hear and you were here very early, which is very nice that you, you, you did this, uh, you already know what is uh, Santa Cruz. So uh, Santa Cruz is the platform you are using now, except for two of you who do not have the credentials, but I will send it to you, don't worry. So Santa Cruz is uh, a platform uh, uh, made by SyncOR because we give a lot of uh, online uh, uh, tutorial and we wanted to have a platform which is, uh, which is where we, you have everything you need to, to work on. So you have the slides on the part, you have the R studio, you already followed the, the instruction. So you already know that how to connect, where to find your course. Uh, you know that you can move the, the window to have be your part for your studio or for the slides. And you know that you can use the arrows to go in the slides. You can use the O to see the different slides and move inside. If you are looking for something during the exercises, you probably know already how to use R Studio. This is R Studio server, so it's not really different from R Studio, but there is one more uh, button with upload and export. And the export button, I suggest you take the, all the course uh, or everything that you did at the end of the course so that you have your notes too. So you can already open a markdown file to take your notes inside. And at the end of the, of the tutorial, you will be able to, to take it back to you up uh, my notes and the home the courses or studio if you want it in full screen the chat room is not here as you can see that's why we are working with the slack but it will come later on and uh, resources if you want to see the cheat sheet of the different uh, packages that are uh, already available as cheat sheets so this, you already did it, so I will not take a lot of time on it, but if you have questions about that, do not hesitate to, to ask them inside the, in the Slack room. And um, yeah, uh, we are doing this uh, with uh, Zoom, so you already know how to, to shut down your uh, microphone and to open it too. You know how to control the webcam, which is with this button here. Um, here is the, the chat part, but as I said, I suggest to, to speak inside uh, Slack so that it's easier to follow. Uh, with this green button, I can share my screen and it's possible that during the exercises, if you want some help for some specific parts, uh, we may ask you to share your screen or you can, of course, copy paste the code that uh, uh, has some problems and put it inside Slack so that we can uh, answer and see what uh, what you tried and how we can uh, help you. Uh, when you you take the sharing screen, you can choose which which uh, screen or which window you want to share so that you can protect uh, part of your privacy uh, if you if you want. But do not worry, we're not here to to take part uh, to take advantage of your computer. Um, so we will ask you to mute your microphone during the slides presentation, which you already did. So thank you for that. Uh, you can share the screen. I already said it. You can cut off your webcam uh, if you want. For now, it seems to work correctly, so it's good. Um, yeah, there, there may be some other thing if you're if you think that you are. Uh, 
uh, stuck in the full screen mode because now you can only see my own computer. So maybe uh, you want to do something else, you can double click on press uh, escape. Uh, if you think you lose this bar somewhere, maybe it's because you are in the full screen and then you can go on top of your, uh, your screen. But if you have the problem, you can go back on this slide to see how, how to do it. And we will start to draw some maps for now. The only thing I didn't say is uh, timer five. So we have a timer, which uh, this one is about uh, five minutes. And we will use it to have some breaks during the, during the tutorial. It means that uh, we will do one hour uh, work. And at the end of the one hour, we have five minutes stop. So we will ask you to do ex exactly this five minutes. Uh, take some fresh air, do not look at your screen during this five minutes, and then come back to the tutorial and we start again. So I already spoke a little too much, so I will let uh, Jakub take uh, on this, uh, on the following on this slide. I will give access to the people who send me an email not having their credentials. And if you have any questions on the part I already presented, do not hesitate to, to say it in the, in the Slack room. Thank you very much. And I just stopped my Thanks, screen Sebastian. so that Jakub, you can do it. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so hello again. I will start with the first part of our uh, tutorial today. And we'll start uh, with the, probably the, the thing that most people connect with spatial data and geography, which is making drawing maps. And we, of course, want to draw a map for several reasons. Firstly, to just see our data, validate if our data is correct, but also at the end of our projects when we want to share our results with other people and we want to have a map as a as a result of our project, as a, some kind of an outcome. And we, have, we want to have our map in, in some kind of a paper or report uh, or, a, or a blog post or some other format. So uh, today, due to the time limits and so on, we will focus just on one major package for making maps in R called TMAP. And we will also focus on one type of spatial data which is called spatial vectors. That being said, uh, we know that there are a lot of possibilities and TMAP is not the only one. So probably you know that we have a lot of um, packages which gives us and allows us to create regular plots like ggplot2 or, or interactively plotly. We have, of course, built-in functions in R namely on the, the plot function. And in, in all of those uh, uh, tools, we can also create maps. For example, most of data packages, R spatial data packages, have function called plot, where you can plot a simple spatial data. However, it is very, or at least quite hard, to create a nice looking map just by st uh, stacking a lot of plot functions altogether. Therefore, we are going to focus on some packages dedicated for making maps because they usually not only are uh, easier to operate, they also understand spatial data better. And finally, they also have uh, default, defaults that are more suitable for spatial data. So, Today, I'm going to focus on the package called TMAP, and you'll hear about this package in a second. However, there are uh, some more possibilities, uh, like uh, ggSpatial, which is an extension of ggplot2, or, or the cartography package. And uh, when we're talking about making maps, traditionally, we are thinking about static maps, which means we create a map, we can print that map, and this map is static in the sense that we cannot manipulate data after making this map. On the other hand, we also have some tools for making interactive maps. So in, with interactive maps, we can create the map, 
And next, our users can zoom in or zoom, on, zoom out, can pan on the map, can select an object, and so on. And in the interactive maps uh, world, we have packages like MapDeck, MapView, or Leaflet. But as you will see uh, fairly soon, the TMAP package also allows us to create interactive maps. So maybe before we, we uh, even start this, we probably should ask ourselves this fairly simple question. Uh, do we really want to draw a map? And this is not a vain question because um, maps are perfect for some problems, but not for all of the problems. What do I mean by that? Our uh, main purpose while making map uh, well, it's not to just create a nice looking plot. It's to communicate something. Therefore, our map should be, and our uh, situation or, or uh, some features we want to present needs to have some spatial patterns. We want to show that something uh, in space is related to our data. Because when we have a data which is exactly the same on the, on the whole map. It just, uh, it's just not a very, very useful map. So here you can see on this example, we have a, uh, we can see uh, on the left regular plot, which just gives us some values of, of uh, coffee bars uh, per uh, department in France. France. And you can, we can see that some departments have uh, more, some departments have less. However, when we uh, put that on the map, we can see that some uh, areas uh, have larger density uh, of the, of the coffee, coffee bars. And we can also look at the second dimension. So what was the department with the smallest number of coffee bars? And we can look at this if that's uh, something which is spatially related. So this is, this is our uh, main reason. And as I mentioned before, this is not the only reason. Sometimes uh, we just want to create a simple map to see if our data is correct, because we shouldn't uh, um, expect that our data will be always correct. And this is, uh, I think, also a good, uh, a good way of working to start by looking at the data and understanding data better. So when we think about uh, making maps, we also should know a few rules about visualizations. And many of visualization rules, like selecting proper color palettes, uh, are very or identical to creating uh, regular uh, plots. Um, and there are, of course, a lot of uh, rules just for uh, cartography, just for map making. So we know that when we have um, data, which is qualitative data, for example, number, uh, name of a region or uh, some category or a group, uh, and our data is uh, point data, we can use different shapes to describe our data. So one category could be this shape, the second category could be this one, and so on and so on. In this context, we can also use colors, but you can see that each color is very different. So we cannot order those colors. This, every color is very different. And this way we can uh, put a name to a color. And colors can, only, can, also, can work not only for points, but also for lines. And as you can see in the example below, uh, example of uh, land cover classes, colors can represent different categories. Uh, next, we can also think about uh, quantitative data. And here we can think about two types. So can we sum the data and it still makes sense? Then we can use so-called absolute data and we can use sizes to express uh, our data and to show that uh, that there is a difference between the, the smallest sizes and the largest. And this difference is proportional to the size of an object. 
And of course, again, this applies to uh, point data. On the other hand, we can still use colors uh, for qualitative data, quantitative data, but in this example, uh, colors should have some order and we uh, should be able to know the order uh, as quick as possible. So in this example, we can see that we start from a bright uh, brown color and we are going through uh, next colors and finally getting to the dark brown color. And in the example below, uh, we can uh, see those colors used for unemployment rate. So that's, that's important that, that we need to, uh, when we have some data, we need to ask ourselves a question. What's the type of the data we have and we want to present? Uh, gladly, uh, we have some R packages and R functions and often they help us with making proper decisions, as I will show you in a second. Okay, so let's start by reading spatial data. Because of course, uh, we cannot create a map uh, or we, most of the time we shouldn't create a map when we uh, don't have a spatial uh, data. Of course, sometimes we can create uh, data by hand, uh, but in terms of spatial data, creating few points is possible, but more than that, it's maybe not, uh, maybe R is not the best for that purpose. So in this example, you can see that we've got uh, three uh, data sets. Uh, one is called europe.gpkg, second one is department.shp, and third one is cafes, bars. Dot, uh, SHP. So those uh, three data sets are, are spatial vectors. So they are represented by the vector data for a model. And in case of Europe and department, we are talking about polygons. So format which shows us areas. And the last one uh, is, is uh, about point data. So uh, to read our spatial data, we are using the SF package. So this is right now the modern standard for vector data in R, which allows you to read uh, dozens of uh, spatial vector formats. And it, it also includes, uh, for example, creating spatial data from text files. Uh, so that's also possible. However, in our case, as you can see, we have spatial data formats. So we have two formats here. One format here, used in those two examples, is called SHP, which stands for S3 shapefiles. And the second one, it's the modern replacement of, of shapefiles called GPKG or our geo package. So we are reading all of those using the read underscore uh, SF function. And this way we are creating new objects. Uh, so we have three, three new objects and we know that they are spatial objects that we want to visualize. So how uh, the TMAP package works? Of course, firstly, we need to attach this package with library uh, TMAP. And next we can start making maps. And with uh, the TMAP package, we have fairly similar ideas to the ggplot2 package, if some of you are familiar with that package. The, uh, so here we are using some kind of uh, grammar to create maps, and maps are created by stacking layers. So the main function in this package is called tm underscore shape. And as you can see here as well, most of the functions in this package and all of the functions that create maps uh, have the, this prefix. So tm underscore allows you to look what's possible uh, in, in tmap when you want to create a map. Okay, so going back to tm shape. So what's tm shape? What, why we even have this function? So the main role for tm shape is to let uh, the package know what kind of uh, what kind of an object 
you want to visualize. So if you just uh, type this line, so TM uh, underscore uh, shape Europe, we are just letting know the, the team up package that we want to uh, visualize our data set, our object called Europe. However, uh, if you just try to run this line of code alone, you'll get an error because this function uh, has only one role to or one main role to specify the data. It does not give you any visualization. Why is that? This is because we need to specify how we want to visualize uh, our data because we can, for example, visualize our data symbols. So for example, we can have different shapes or colors or sizes for each point. We can visualize our data as lines. So we can have different colors or line widths to show uh, some attributes. And we can uh, visualize our polygons in several ways. So TM polygons gives us uh, some color for the internal, for the areas of our polygons, and also gives us some, some other color for the borders of the polygons. Sometimes, however, we just want to have either only the colored areas. In those cases, we ju will just use TM fill, or we just want to have our uh, borders only on the map, then we just use TM borders. We can also put uh, some kind of a text on the map and many other uh, concepts, many other layers. The one last thing that I should show you is that we are connecting all of the layers, all of the commands in the tmap package with the plus sign. So in this example, we are saying, I want to plot my object called Europe so the object we read on the previous slide. And I want to visualize this object using TM polygons. So I want to create polygons of my data. And you can see we have uh, quite large uh, data here. So, but in our case, as you remember, uh, we uh, loaded three different data sets. Uh, so we want to focus on just one uh, area, on area of France, and we want to uh, plot um, different uh, departments. So here, look at the pluses. So we started with this one on the previous example, but now we said, I want to add something to my map. And what I want to add? I want to add my second uh, object, uh, department uh, L93. And I also want to do something else. I also want to zoom in just to this, this object. Because previ on previous slide, you remember, we had a very large area, but we just want to be here. So it's possible with just specifying is master equals true. So this is uh, this uh, data, this object becomes uh, the main uh, object that we are going to zoom, zoom in. And next, again, we need to specify how we want to, for this data, for this object to be uh, uh, visualized. And in this example, I want to uh, specify a color for each of the departments. So I can do that with call and so the call argument and I'm and I in my data in the departments I have a column called nom depth and this in this column you have names of each uh, department. So this way I'm saying I want to have colors based on this column and the team app will automatically create some colors and will add a legend. And finally, we can, we can either stay with some default color palette or we can move, move to some uh, different uh, color palette 
of our choice. And in this example, I uh, selected color palette called set one. This color palette came from the R color brewer uh, package. And you can see this is our map. But I, I, I'm not uh, entirely happy because for this map, uh, I don't think the legend is, 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 uh, is maybe required. Maybe I just want to show you the spatial distributions and sizes of the departments. So what can I do? I can just specify that I don't want to have a legend here. So I can just say legend.show equals false. And now we can see hopefully the first difference. The first difference is the legend is no, it's not here anymore. The second uh, difference that hopefully you can also see is that I also added borders between uh, the departments. How? I just specify that I can add borders with plus TM borders and they will have a mm, gray color by default. And I decided maybe the darker gray will be better. So I changed the color to, to a dark gray. So this is how uh, we basically manipulate with the TMAP package. Uh, so we specify our objects and we are saying how our objects uh, should be portrayed. And we can connect many, many objects. And they, this connection works as layers. So this, the first layer will be at the bottom and next we are putting the second layer on top of the first layer and so on and so on. Here you can see even a uh, uh, expanded version of, of this idea where when we added uh, three new elements. So now you can see that we added a scale bar here in the bottom right corner. We added uh, the north arrow, in the top right corner, and we also added a map title in the left top corner. So how can we do that? In the same fashion as previously with our map layers. We just need to add another uh, functions that we can also manipulate. So in this example, I added TM scale bar, and this is the default, default TM scale bar that was uh, made exactly for this data set for this uh, level of zoom, but for different data, it could have a slightly different values. Next, we add a TM compass. So TM compass creates uh, a north arrow. And by default, I think it, will, it, would, it was probably here, but I wanted to move it somewhere else. So to move any element, so we can, in the same fashion, we can move, for example, the scale bar. To move any element, we need to use the position uh, argument. And the position argument requires a vector with two elements. The first element says, is it left, center, or right? And the second argument uh, specifies bottom, center, or top. And also, uh, you can try, uh, it's possible to specify those as values between 0 and 1, and between, again, 0 and 1. And finally, we are adding the last layer. In our case, this is a map title. And to add elements like map title or change the map background or disable the map frame and many others, we can use the TM layout uh, function. So in this example, I just added a title with the title argument equals to French departments. Okay, so uh, that's about yeah. all from the introduction, uh, very brief introduction to the TMAP package. And now I have a question for you uh, that you can answer on uh, Slack. So the question is, what is the correct code to draw 
department L93 map. So we know that this data set is a spatial object containing polygons, and you have four uh, answers, A, B, C, and D. So just take your time uh, and look at the, the answers, think a little bit, uh, try not looking to the previous slides and, and uh, select uh, what do you think about it in the, uh, in the slot. In the in the in the Slack uh, chat. So thank you for your answers. So it seems that every, everyone agrees on the answer C. You can also visually see that also all of the uh, function starts with TM underscore. So uh, we, I think there are, uh, there are any exceptions from that rule. So that's why this one is also not correct. And you also uh, hear we uh, in the 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 answer called B the B answer, we didn't start with TM shape, and you will see uh, that every time you want to create a map with TM package, we, you start with TM shape. Um, almost every time. Okay, so just to sum up this part of the tutorial, the first question you should uh, ask yourself is: Do you really need a, a map? And you should be uh, honest with yourself because often we uh, want to condense a lot of information when we create some reports and so on. That's why we should choose what's the most effective and what's the most informative. Uh, but again, if your map, if your data is, is have some spatial relationships, uh, that's a perfect way uh, to visualize that. Maps, maps are great for that. Next, we need to think about uh, different types of uh, representations and visualizations. Uh, and we should think about not only um, what's the correct type for our type of variable, but also what's the color, correct color palette for our audience. For example, if you want to print your map in the uh, black and white color, maybe you need to change your color palette to something different than uh, you, you made on your computer. And you also need to think about what your audience expects. Finally, I, um, we started using R and I showed you that you can read spatial vectors uh, like shapefiles or geo packages with the SF package. And at the end, we draw some tmap maps uh, with functions like tm shape to, to specify the data. Uh, TM polygons to plot polygons, but we could also use TM symbols for points or TM lines for lines. And you know that you can add uh, some map elements like TM scale bar or TM compass. And we can change uh, appearance of our map with TM layout. So that's uh, about all for the first part of the tutorial. Now, is the time for you to uh, test yourself, to uh, try to uh, work those ideas. We prepared you some uh, exercises that you can find uh, in the Santa Cruz platform. And uh, for this part, we, uh, we ask you to start from the beginning of the file and work through until the line for the manipulating vector data pr presentation. So just the uh, first Maybe, maybe uh, we can present uh, inside the Earth studio, uh, Jakub, directly yep. to show which, uh, which okay. file to open, or I can do it if you want. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. So, um, so we have our files. You have 
some introduction and next you have some packages to to attach and finally you've got um, some uh, exercises scenario and objectives so we uh, ask you to uh, read some data and next to fill some missing uh, code uh, and so on. So hopefully you uh, understand uh, where you can find it. So it's in your main folder. I think you just have this file. So yep. just open this RMD file called starting with EXO, explore uh, San Luis. As Doris mentioned before, uh, this data set uh, is our idea was to uh, put you uh, in St. Louis to maybe uh, just to have a look at the city and and have some fun uh, being there. Um, maybe you have access to the HTML. You can you can open it, Jakub. The HTML is the exercises when it when you will have finished it at the end of the three hours. You should be able to have this. So you can open this one and see what we expect you to do. So you have the, not the answers, but at least the, the maps that are already drawn. So if the, if the text is not uh, understandable enough, maybe the, the, the map which is drawn uh, will help you to, to see what we, we ask you to do. Next um, major topic when we think about maps and spatial data and probably the hardest topic to grasp is uh, a fairly, uh, I, 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 would, I would hope, obvious sentence that Earth is not flat. So we, when we work with spatial data, uh, we usually, maybe not always, but in most cases, we work on data from, from our planet, from Earth, and our planet is not flat. But when we create maps, maps are flat, maps are put on our flat screens or on a piece of paper and so on. And therefore, we, it's not very easy and not obvious on how to uh, put a sphere, our uh, geoid, our planet, and put it on the map uh, in the best way possible. So here you can see example on the left that's, again, that's, that's actually it's a simplification of our planet because our planet is not uh, that uh, nicely looking. We have uh, some mountains and some uh, flatter areas and so on. But when we need to, when we want to plot a map, we are moving to um, closer to this visualization when our data is, is, is flat. And there are a lot of ways on how we can do that. So that's the role of cartography, how we can convert and move from this 3D uh, representation uh, to the flat one. And you see some major ways uh, of transforming data uh, from, the, uh, from the, the, the sphere to the flat surface and they're uh, cylindrical or conic or azimuthal. And they have some uh, properties that uh, are better and worse for some kind of maps. Like azimuthal are often used for poles, while uh, conic are uh, used for uh, larger scale maps and uh, cylindrical are used often for uh, world maps. However, we always, when we uh, create maps, we have some distortions and our maps uh, are not exactly the same as they are when we think about Earth as a, as a sphere. So how we, using R, how we can operate and how we can know what kind of projection we are working with. So we uh, call this whole idea coordinates reference system. So in, uh, in uh, the, let's say, recent history, people created a lot of those, of those coordinate reference systems. Because someone wants to create a map of France, 
but other person wants to create a map of, of Kenya or map of US and maybe a, a global a world map on a map or just uh, an, a Asia and so on. So for each map, we want to be uh, as correct as possible about our area. Uh, and we don't care when we create a map of, of, of uh, US, we don't care if our map will be distorted uh, for some other continents. We just want to be as best as possible for our area. And because of that, people uh, created hundreds, maybe thousands, I, I assume, called the reference systems. And as I said, this is a large topic and I'm definitely not going to tell you uh, everything you need to know about it in this uh, few slides. But uh, gladly, most of the time, spatial objects contains this information. So your spatial objects, like our data we, we read few, a few minutes ago, contains this information. And um, one way on how you can um, work with data and your objects, because sometimes we need to move from one representation, one projection, or one coordinate reference system to the other, and one way uh, to name your objects is to add the postfix uh, showing you what's the projection we are using. So for example, in the, in the here, we are either using local projection uh, L93 or we are using, using global projection WGS94. And uh, very recently, uh, just a few months ago, there was a huge uh, change in R in relation to uh, coordinate reference systems, which um, meant that if some of you work on spatial data before, uh, we usually work with using this representation called plot for string. However, right now we are moving to a new representation called WKT, well-known text, and this uh, let's call that code, this code stores information about our projection. So for example, in this NZ data, we have local projection for New Zealand and you have some mathematical properties of this projection uh, stored in your file. So most of the time, um, you don't need to worry about that too much. Most of the time it's in your data. However, I recommend you to watch the video here on the, you have a link here, which explains the, the changes and also explain in more detail what the WKT uh, is and, and how you can extract that from your data. Next, when we think about um, spatial data, we also need to know that spatial data is just uh, simplification of reality is just a, uh, some kind of a model of our reality. Because our reality, as you know, uh, is complex, is uh, uh, we are still not able to grasp all of it, but we can simplify our, uh, our reality. And we are doing that using those two data types, namely uh, raster. And raster, as you can see here, um, or maybe uh, something which is called regular raster is just a matrix. Matrix, so we have uh, columns and rows and each cell has some value. And we can put a value of elevation, for example, or maybe we can put a value to a land cover category. And this is how we can create maps using raster data. And also we can have uh, vector data. And you already seen some examples of that uh, during the previous session and during the exercises. So we can have polygons, for example, country, uh, countries uh, are represented by polygons or French departments or uh, neighborhoods in St. Louis. We can have lines, so like rivers or roads, and we can have points, so locations of something. So what are the basic packages that we are uh, using for uh, spatial data? 
So right now I recommend you when you are working with vector data to use the package called SF. So the SF package uh, is the modern uh, way of working with vector data and it's recommended for most of the uh, use cases. When we are thinking on about raster data, situation is maybe a little bit more complex. You can go both two ways. You can go either with the package called stars, which not only gives you a support for raster data, but also for space time data. And finally, you can go with one of this, one of two from the group called Terra or raster. So I still recommend using uh, the raster package, but there is a new package called Terra, which, which is planned to replace the uh, raster package with some more efficient code for pr processing of raster data. All right, so now, now is the time for the next uh, question. Again, like in the previous example, previous case, you, uh, you should open your Slack uh, and try to read the question carefully, read the answers carefully, and try to answer them. So the question is, what is the first question to ask yourself when you have a problem with your spatial data manipulations? Uh, you know that you will have these two questions at least to ask yourself. So maybe the first two questions and everyone agrees that it's B and C. And then you can probably ask about your computer or the instructors that we are. Um, thank you, Jakub. I think then you have a summary part, but the part is for yeah, you so to just, remember. Just, yeah. just those four elements. So. Yeah. Projections, as we mentioned, that's the uh, always most often the main issue, but issue in the sense that I will encourage all of you to think and learn a little bit more about projections. Next, we uh, need to know that main two data models in our, our vector data and raster data. And uh, because of that, we also should use different R packages. Good, so I think we will let uh, Doris share our screen to present yep, the let following. Me, let me uh, find, I have so many, um, I have so many, oh my goodness, where is it? Thank you, ja Jakub, for this uh, first part of the, the presentation. You can, you can move your hand if you want to say, to applause, you know, so that it's uh, <laughs> no sound and we're happy to have you here. And he's not leaving, okay? He'll be here for the for the exercises part too. But thank you for oh, doing this part. I like pressed something and all my slides just went out of control. Okay, You're on it. So, so now we're gonna talk about um, just kind of going more into detail, but not too much detail due to time constraints <laughs> about projecting and reading your data. So, um, when you want to read in a spatial data format, which several are listed, you're going to use read underscore SF. Um, if there are issues in loading your data, um, maybe like you forgot to um, load the libraries, that might be one thing, or you might like accidentally map to the um, wrong location, or you might have the file extensions wrong. So just two things I want to mention before I go on. Um, the most used uh, spatial data format is the Esri shape file. Um, and that has a minimum of four files. Um, I'm going to have to throw in my uh, GIS librarian hat on and say, if you really want to be nice, please add some metadata to that in an XML file or like just, just something. So if you share it, you're showing that you care with a metadata file. Okay, and then next is the geo package. Um, a lot of issues can happen with like sharing of files because the shape file is like four to five files. So um, the geo package packages everything up into one file. 
So that is the new thing. So um, I haven't personally um, played around with it yet as much, but it is becoming the thing, um, especially if you're like using different um, GIS platforms, I highly recommend you look into GeoPackage. And um, as you can see, um, the read underscore SF function is mapped to the location of the data. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So um, we had this very healthy discussion about um, getting the, co the coordinate reference system, you know, like is your data projected or not? Um, the easiest way you can do that is just using this function st underscore crs and you will be able to see what your coordinate reference system is. And I'm not going to like go into detail about all of that because <laughs> it can get really um, lengthy. So um, let's just say you have a points data file and it's in WGS84 which is actually um, a format that's used for 3D data. Um, and you need to project it to a date, to a projection that is more appropriate to where the data is actually at. You're going to use ST underscore transform to do that. And you are going to use whatever um, CRS coordinate reference system that you want to. Um, if it's points, like if it's a CSV file of points with um, latitudes and longitudes, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you first um, transform it in WGS84, and then after that, transform it to whatever projection you want. That's just going from a lot of trial, pain, and error, dealing with points. Um, and um, you know, that kind of moves on to my next point, <laughs> ironic. Um, you use for CSV files, um, you can read it in or CSV text, so on, you know, you just use whatever appropriate reader function is um, that you need for that. So for example, in this uh, slide for cafes and bars, we're gonna use the read underscore CSV for that. And as you can see in the slide, um, you have the amenities, the timestamp, the user ID, and the longitude and latitude. But you can't, but you can't play around with this spatially yet because it is not transformed into a spatial object. So in order to do that, you have to use the under the st underscore as a self function to do that. And so um, after you read in your CSV file or text file or whatever. Um, you use this function and then you specify which columns are your longitude and latitude. And, um, you know, just make sure that you actually know the spellings of your longitude and latitude because some people might do long lat and then they'll like put this code in and be like, hey, why does it work? Well, it's because your columns are not the same. So be, um, oh, and then, yeah, be, Notice that, and then if you are if you are a GIS person who's worked with different software, for me, I think of things in lat long. And I remember I was like 10 minutes trying to figure out why isn't this working? It's because you need to put your longitude first and your latitude second, and then your spatial, um, you know, your CRS. So that's a big um, tip from me about using this function. And then let's just say you, you know, you read it in, you do some spatial manipulations, you might join some things together um, and you want to um, output it as a shape file or a geo package. Well, you can use the right underscore SF to do that. And um, yeah, you can, again, use any type of format for that. And like I said before, highly recommend that you play around with the geo package format because that's becoming the new thing and, G and GIS or spatial computing. Okay, now that I, I hope people were able to um, grasp what I was saying, I know I went through that fast, but I want everyone to have time to do the uh, exercises. So let's um, do this quiz. So what is the correct way of dealing with the following text file with coordinates to be used as a spatial points data set? 
and um, just know that 2154 is Lambert 93 projection, France projected, and then 4326 is the WGS 84 format. So I believe there is a poll up. And uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, take your time. This one is tricky, but you will use it. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, answer D is is uh, not good because you have a txt file, which is a text file, which means that you will not be able to read directly this as a spatial data set because there is no spatial information inside. So answer D is not correct, but you pointed this out. Um, answer uh, B, uh, on the bottom left, B is not good either because we read a TXT file and try to transform it as a spatial data with ST transform, but ST transform only works if your data set is already a, da a spatial data set. But if you read TXT file, it's not a spatial data set. So you have to use the function ST as SF to transform the text file into a spatial data set file, which is why A and C should be the two answers to look at. The only difference between the two questions, these two answers is the coordinate reference system. And when you, we use ST as SF, you have to choose the coordinate reference system of the data set you have, not the one you want the one you have inside your data. So you need to know what is this, the, the projection of the data you have. In this case, we wrote that is position of point using a GPS and the, with the GPS, you have geographical coordinate uh, data, which means it, it's answer A, which is most likely to be good, but uh, as some of you pointed out, it's probable that the order of coordinates is not in a good order. Like we should put longitude before latitude. So, because I think we tried on the previous slide, it's longitude before latitude. So you see, even if we think that something are good, it's not good. So answer would have been A, but in the present case, it's no answer is good. It was not uh, intended to do it this way. Okay, just a mistake for me. Um, I think we're going to go to the exercise part. Uh, uh, Doris, you have, uh, I think, uh, a summary part for this. Yeah. That you can um, I think uh, I'm, I think you actually like summed up the most important point. <laughs> You know, like I was going in the like in the Slack, and I'm like, "What do you mean? What are you talking about? Should yeah, it be yeah. longitude?" I was like, "What do you mean?" But it is. And then I looked at the exercise. I'm like, "Oops," because I'm like, "Oh, I work in different GIS platforms and blah blah blah." But now I see. Sorry about that. My bad. Our bad. Um, yeah. So that's the biggest lesson learned. Make sure you have your longitudes before your latitudes. And um, I really don't think there's anything else to say. No. Let, let's practice now. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. So um, now we're going to talk about, um, I hope, am I the right one? Or is this yours? I'm sorry. Let me go back. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about manipulating spatial, I mean, vector data using the tidyverse. So um, as um, we've been looking at, um, the data that we've been dealing with is rectangular. So it has rows and columns. And so one, so we can use many of the dplyr verbs on these SF objects, which for me, going from many GIS platforms, I thought this was pretty cool. 
um, for example, um, you can um, do a union of the various departments into like one um, like region. Um, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Sorry, um, you can do um, like, I'm trying to figure out what this is doing. But you can filter out certain names of your um, regions or you can select what you want to have into your like from your spatial data using dplyr so like if you only need three columns you can select that um and let's just say you want to do a little bit of cleaning up um of your names like for example the s2 2 title puts a capital letter um on every first um, letter of your name so you can do all sorts of tidying using um, the dplyr verbs and then also making sure you use the piping notation and i kind of like went too much forward because this is actually what i was talking about how you can actually like do what i would call like the, the, the dissolve if you're a gis person to doing it from departments to regions. And I just thought that's pretty cool that you can do a group by and summarize to um, group smaller geographic units to bigger geographic units. And, um, and one very, very important function that you will be dealing with a lot with spatial data is joining. And I'm not going to get into the whole details of it due to time, but essentially when you do a join, you have like a shared key, um, a key that's the same between both data sets. And then you're going to do a particular join. Um, for me, I do a lot of left joining. So if there's like data set A and B, I'm joining B to A. And all of the columns from data set B is going to the spatial data set A. And then like, if I just want like, like I have two data sets and I just want the ones that are in uh, data set B and that's it to show up, you know, that's shared between data set A and B, then I'm gonna do an inner join. And I'm only gonna see what's in the, like what's detected in the second one, in the first one, in the first one if that makes sense. So you're only get you're only seeing what's common between the two data sets with the inner join. And then the full join, um, I guess there's times to do this. You're just joining everything together. Um, I don't, you know, like, I don't know. Personally, I would never, I had never had a reason to use it. So I never did. So I've mostly used left joins. And then if I just want data like i just want to know what's in both tables if i'm joining um like one to another i'll do an inner join and i'll put a link in the exercises channel just so you can better understand that um, because this is actually a quite this can become quite lengthy of the discussion so um for example in here you know, for me, what I always do is I do a glimpse and try to see what um, columns are in um, the data that I'm dealing with and I find um, commonality for that. So for me, one of the things I do a lot is um, join demographic CSV files to um, boundaries, to boundary files. And the data that I use um, has a common key and I just look for that common key name um, and I join it using that specialized number that's created from the data source that I use. So just um, when you have two data sets, see which fields are common, log them, and then do the appropriate join based on what you're really trying to get. But if, you know, just a quick application um, tip, if you're um, joining demographic data to like say a region or um, geographic boundary, chances are you're going to be using a left join. Chances you are. Okay, so, but for this one, um, for this inner join, um, I'm joining these two data sets 
And I just only want to know what's in both um, data sets. Um, and I only want to see that. So that's why um, I would do an inner join because um, the difference is, is like with a left join, it's going to just show NA. Like if there's no matching values, it's just going to show NA. But the inner join doesn't even show anything. It just shows me what's in both um, data sets um, that's common. Um, and then you can just glimpse um, that. Okay, so um, I hope that made sense. So um, for our next quiz, um, what you're gonna do is to choose which function, which join function allows you to join the external data set restaurants with the spatial data set France um, underscore L93 but you only want to keep spatial entities where there is a match. So um, um, I, uh, one tip, the direction is important when it comes to figuring out what the answer might be. Did anyone answer? Um, can I give a tip, Sebastian, just a little hint? Of course you can. Thank you. you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I just want to reiterate this question because this question might be a little confusing. Okay. You only want to see the data. Like when you join France 193 to restaurants. So think of the direction of the join. You only want to see what's being like, what's, you know, the transaction. So if I have A to B and I'm transferring B to A, I only want to see what's in A. And that's essentially what this is asking. So the transaction is very important. So you only want to see what's in the first data set that's chosen, which is restaurants. <laughs> Many teams, huh? So right. maybe we can, we can ask, uh, one of each, each, each team? You, you can change answers if you want, feel free, yeah. because you know joins are very tricky things and I even get yeah. them confused in my head. Like I have to think about it conceptually. I'm like, okay, I'm joining this to that. And you know, so it's totally fine, okay? Like we all deal with spatial data. And for, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna just admit, like sometimes I mess it up. <laughs> yeah. The problem is not to have the good or the wrong answer, it's to answer, uh, understand why one is good and one, one is right, wrong. Right. Which is why we are here to explain you. Yeah. But maybe we can ask, for instance, I see that Julius uh, answer B. Would you like to explain to us why you think B is a good answer? If you uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, based on how uh, Doris has explained the left join, uh, France is my primary data set. So 
I just want to see what uh, happens to it. Um, yeah. you, you're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got the, you, you got the date, like you got the data set, right? Like B, you got the data set, right? But the, the, the thing I emphasize is you only want to see the restaurant's data. You only want to see that. And that will only show up if you do this one join. Maybe we can ask someone who answered the C. Uh, who didn't ask uh, Priscilla, for instance? Uh oh, I see more people are. <laughs> if, if you want to. Sorry, did yeah. you ask me? Yes. Um, Would you I like chose, to. Yeah. Uh, first, I chose restaurants as the first because. Because she said that she wanted that restaurants was the thing she wanted to see, uh, and only the France ones that um, uh, where there was a match. So I want to have all the ones that have a match to restaurants. So in that case, I will do in a join will give have all the ones that have a match, and as restaurant was the focus, so I use. I start with restaurants and then I inner join France, whatever. Okay. I'm, good. I'm not sure yeah. if my explanation is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's an explanation. That's good. I mean, and now, now we'll, we'll uh, listen to somebody in the D camp and then you will uh, be able to know which one is good or not. Um, I see some people moving from one group to the other, but uh, who can I ask? Uh, Cathy, did I ask you some question already in the D group, if you want to answer? Cathy, maybe I'm not saying correctly the name. Eh? Um, Cathy. Okay, so or Bill, Bill, would you like to explain us why you choose D? Uh, so D will start with the, the spatial data set France um, and only keep the rows that also appear in restaurants. But yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm struggling to understand why C and D because an inner join will take those rows that match in both, both. Yeah. data yeah, sets yeah. only. So do you want to explain those? Um, so there might be more matches in one data set than the other. So um, that could be in one reason why in terms of the inner join. So the, the inner join is you, 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 you will be sure that with the inner journal that you only choose the, the data which is uh, in both data sets. If you choose the left join, you will keep all the data from France and some of the data of restaurants, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is not the, the question. And then the difference between uh, C and D is the order. Do we keep restaurant first or the spatial data set first? The thing is, if you want the inner join function to work with your spatial data and keep your spatial information at the end of the join, you have to put the spatial data set before. Okay, so if you do the inner join, uh, uh, yeah, so the answer D is a good answer. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise inner join will be used as a deployer on a classical data set and you will do a classical uh, join and you will lose the spatial information. I'm not even sure, uh, I think it doesn't work now in the, I think I'm going to take a new screenshot just to see the evolution of your faces during this tutorial. So if you want to appear on the picture, you can open your video now. And if you do not want to appear on the picture, of course you can, Shut down your video. Ah, I see some intruders. Colin is coming back just for the picture. Eh? <laughs> so, 
So uh, how do I take a screenshot now? So you can, can have a smile or you can show that you're exhausted. You can move your hands. You can just do whatever you want, but the picture is going to be, oh, yeah. My computer is really exhausted. So let's have a screenshot in three, two, one. Yes, good. And I put two screenshots because I, I took two in the Slack so that you know <laughs> what you're looking. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Shell uh, reminded me that uh, we will ask you to answer a survey at the end of the tutorial or I don't know if it's just at the end or maybe later uh, by mail, but you, re you will receive a, a, a quiz questionnaire to know for the user conference, how you, you felt with this uh, tutorial. And I probably also send you another quiz with uh, specific to SyncR because the platform you use now, Cruz, is a quite new platform. I would like to know how you felt about, about it to, to see how we can improve it or not. It will be a short question now, don't worry. If you don't want to answer, just don't answer. Yes, Shell. Um, I'm going to paste the link to the survey on the general channel. Okay. So please, 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 before you go, um, just check it out. And um, I'll give more details on the, on the text, on the Slack. Thank you, Shell. So it's not finished, huh? okay? <laughs> Stay a little more. Uh, I will present you the following of the course and then uh, and then uh, take uh, the time we have to do some exercises. Okay, go on, Seb. You're the last one, and you have hundreds of slides to finish. Good luck. <laughs> uh, where I am. Okay, that finished. <laughs> I'm going too far. Uh, perfect. Uh, Ah, yeah, we, you presented this and this and that. Groups, okay, 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 exercise. Okay, manipulating vector data, spatial manipulation. So um, you learned how to draw some maps with TMAP. You learned how to read some spatial data. You know how to read some uh, non-spatial data text file that you can turn into a spatial point data sets. You know that you can use all the dplyr uh, verbs that you already know uh, to, to manipulate uh, your uh, data like it was a classical data set. So uh, when, you, when you will uh, want to add some information inside the, the table of the data set, you will know how to, to move it because uh, you know how to use the tidyverse on it. And now I uh, will go to the spatial specific part. So something uh, you probably don't know. Or I hope that uh, we also teach you some things in the first two hours. Otherwise, it's use we are useless. But this part is uh, very specific to spatial manipulation. So this is the, the slide where we show you how to read the data because it is the data I will use in this chapter. So uh, one thing I didn't say is that all the code parts inside the slides, um, you can run them because you also have the data of this uh, France uh, map. So if you want to try to, to, to run the code you have in the slides, you, are, you will be able to do it too. Um, so the first thing you can take from your spatial data is some attributes. We already spoke about the getting the coordinate reference system of your data with STCRS. And the STB box is to get the bounding box of the data set, which means the spatial extent. So it gives the 
minimum longitude and maximum longitude of the data and the minimum uh, latitude and maximum latitude of the data uh, in the, the coordinate reference system of the data set. This one is Lambert, which means that is in meter, but you have at least the, the spatial extent of your, of your data set. We spoke about uh, joining some external data sets uh, with not a classical data like a left join or inner join in the previous uh, quiz. But um, what you will probably do too is to join two different spatial data sets. So for that, you can use ST join or you can use ST intersection, for instance. The ST join is like the left join in classical data and the ST intersection is like the inner join. And why would you do that is for instance, you have a big set of spatial points and here we have some uh, cafe and bars in, in France and you want to get the, the data set only the points that are in a specific place. And if you have a spatial data set of polygons, you can choose to do the spatial join and keep only the points that are inside the polygon you have. So if you use the ST intersection, it works like the inner join and the ST intersection will keep all the cafe bar which are in this specific region of France in this place. And so it keeps the points inside the polygons, but it also keeps the information of the polygon. So if you do this spatial join, you will get all the variables that are inside the special, the second spatial data set. That's why here, if I look at the points before the spatial join, I have five uh, variables, but if I look at the special data sets after the intersection, I get uh, 16 uh, different variables because some of them are coming from the, the special data set I used to do the intersection. So you can get information of other special data while doing this special uh, join. And if I show you the result of this intersection, uh, here I use the ggplot to, to do the plot, not to map, but you see that it's possible to do some ggplot with geomsf. And uh, you can use different layers if you use data in each time, in each uh, geom, so that you can put different spatial data set inside. So the first layer is the department, which is very behind in the gray, fill in gray. You have the cafe bar, which are all the points. So the, the black ones and the yellow ones are all the bars in France. The one that are in only in the specific region of France, which is called Brittany here, is are the yellow points. So these are the ones I created with the previous slide with OST intersection. And the last one is the polygons of only Brittany that I put over the, the yellow points. So you see the intersection just took only the part I wanted inside the, the yellow region here. There are other uh, geometric operations. So if you want to do an intersection without keeping uh, all the variables of the second data set, you can use ST crop. So it crops data, but without the variables. You can union uh, two different spatial data sets. So if you have two sets of points and you want to have only one set of points, you can use ST union, same with lines or polygons. You can use ST difference if you want to keep all the parts of your data that are not inside the second uh, uh, spatial uh, uh, area, spatial uh, polygon, for instance. And if you use ST union, on a unique data set, it will join all the, the features inside one uh, inside, inside uh, one spatial data set. So the ST department is the one with all the region of France. And if I apply ST union on it, I have the complete, I have a unique polygon with all polygons that were uh, 
uh, merge uh, joint uh, unions together. You can do some geometric measures on your uh, spatial data set. So if you have a set of polygons, you can calculate the surface, the area of the polygons. If you have a different uh, data set, you can calculate the distance between different two sets of points, for instance, or distance between one set of points and one set of lines or one set of polygons. So any uh, vector data you can you can calculate the distance between different features. And if you calculate the, the length, you can calculate the length of, of a line. So if you have a set of uh, roads, for instance, of streets, you can calculate the length of each, uh, of, uh, each street of your uh, feature if you want. And so this can apply directly uh, on the data set, but I suggest to, to use it inside the mutate, which will create a new column inside your data set. And you will have the, the information, here is the, the area of the, each polygon inside the data set as a new variable of the data set. And if you want to do that, this is a way to do it. Okay, so if you look at the, at the result of these lines of code, we take the entire, uh, uh, map of front with all uh, the departments inside. I create a new variable which is called area, which calculates the area of each polygon. And uh, then I select only two uh, variables of the, of the final uh, data set so that I can show it on the screen, otherwise it's too big. And you can see that we have uh, the first column here at the code. We have the area, which is a surface. What is good with uh, SF2 is that the area is calculated with packaged units, which means that you can do some transformation between meter square to kilometer square with uh, one, uh, one function from the package units. Uh, and of course, each time you use a deployer verb on your uh, spatial data, you keep the geometry because they are specific to the geometry, even if I do not put the geometry inside the select here. Uh, of course, you can do that with areas, but you can do that with length too if you work with a uh, line uh, data sets. Um, an interesting feature too is the uh, ST centroid. It takes uh, the gravity center, the centroid, so of the of your uh, spatial data. So you can have a centroid for your point, for your lines, for your polygons, depending on which one you use. Um, usually for spatial representation, if you want to put some uh, uh, numbers of, uh, I don't know, the, the size of the population, for instance, you will use uh, a circle to show what is the number of individual inside each uh, department and to put this poly the circle in the good place, you can use a centroid, for instance. So here, I calculated the centroid of my polygons, and I have all these uh, uh, points, uh, these uh, orange points in the middle of each uh, polygon of my of my uh, spatial data. Uh, another feature is. Uh, buffer area, it means that you can have a polygon at a specific distance of your feature. So if you want to know what are the points around uh, 50 kilometers around my point, you can use this buffer area. It will create a polygon that you will be able to join uh, to intersect with your, uh, with your other data set so that you know what's around your, uh, your city or, or something. Uh, this buffer area is working on points, but also on lines and also polygons. And in the example below, I used ST union, you know, to to merge all the um, the department of Brittany, so always the same part of France. And then I do the buffer around it. And also, like for the calculation of the surface or the length. Um, SF is working well with package units. And here I say, okay, you can calculate the buffer area with 
around 50 kilometers. And if you use units to do it, it will be easier for you to know exactly in which, uh, in which unit you are, you are working with. You don't have, otherwise you will have to, to use the, the unit of your data set. And in orange, of course, you have the, the buffer area around the, the Brittany part, which are these four polygons here in the west part of France. So, of course, there are many, many other functions inside SF package, there are many operations. We wanted to present to you what are the main functions uh, you, can, uh, you can use. And I mean, usually this, these are the functions we are mostly using when doing some spatial data. The others, you will uh, find them by yourself. So before uh, giving you some uh, time for the, the end of the, this uh, tutorial, I will ask you this last quiz question that, that I can put also inside the Slack is what function do you use to, at the same time, die the spatial data set, point data set using a spatial polygon data set and keep the variables of the polygon inside the point. So, oh. So you're almost all for C. It means that I explained very well this uh, part of the course. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, um, so if you use ST join, it will not die at the spatial point data set, okay? It will keep all the information of the second spatial data set while keeping all the information of the previous point. It's, ST join is like the left join, so you do not die cut. If you use ST crop, it die cuts, but it does not associate variables. If you use left join, it won't work because left join is for a non spatial data set. And if you use this intersection, of course, it die cuts the, the spatial points with the polygons and associate the variables. So that's perfect for the end of this tutorial. You have all the good answer. I'm very proud of you. Um, so as you saw, there are different summary parts uh, in the in the tutorial, so you can go back to it to help you answer the question inside the exercises you have. Uh, normally, you sh don't have to take any other function than the one that are presented inside the, the tutorial, inside the slides to answer the, the exercises. Um, and it should be the time for uh, practice, but I think I will uh, stop the, the, the tutorial here. Uh, I will probably stay for 15 to 20 minutes more so that you, can, you have some time to do some exercises as uh, I am here. I don't know if, uh, how Doris and Jakub are for now, but I will stay here a little more so that you can practice now if, if, if you want, if you have time to do it, if you want to answer the questions. Um, I will also, as I said, let the Slack open for the week so that we can continue to, to answer with you. I will put the answers on this uh, GitHub at the end, just when I will uh, have some time to, to take some fresh air and to drink <laughs> a little <laughs> water after, after that. And so, um, let me close the, the tutorial, the official tutorial for now. And just after the closing, it won't be totally closed because you will be able to do some more uh, exercises and more discussion in the Slack uh, channel. Um, so
So uh, as you saw, we had uh, a lot of things to, to present to you. Um, uh, I think uh, Doris and, and Jakub will join me to say that we were happy to, to present to you all this, uh, this slide and the, this work. And we were happy to work together to, to, to prepare this and to, to propose <laughs> you this, uh, this uh, tutorial. Uh, you have you had some privilege because you know we could not uh, accept uh, everyone and we wanted to have some small groups so that we could interact with you and you saw that we didn't we didn't really had uh, all the time we wanted for the for the the exercises part which is the part where we wanted to do, interact with you but i hope you had at least uh, enough interaction during the part uh, with exercises you, you had and we we're still here to to continue uh, on this and I hope you, you enjoyed uh, having this introduction to spatial data. As I said, there are much more things to, to, to learn from manipulating spatial data, but at least you have the main thing to, to if you have something to, to rem remember for this tutorial is the part we have in the quiz, okay? And as you now have 100% good answers in the quiz, you are good to go with the, on your own with the special data, so do not worry. You're not alone with the R community. Uh, maybe I can let also Doris say a word before ending this. If you um, yes, um, this has been really fun. I hope everybody else had fun. You know, um, I saw a lot of people laughing and it always makes me happy when I see people smile and laugh. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you so much for joining our tutorial. And um, we'll make some updates to the code, <laughs> like some of the quiz questions. Yeah. <laughs> and <have laughs> see, that was a good teachable. Like it was, it was good to know that people were listening because I harped so much about that. And then like we made that mistake. So our bad about that, but we'll have the um, material updated and ready for you to use on your own. So thanks again, everyone. I really enjoyed um, teaching you and I also enjoyed working with you Sebastian and Jakob it's been fun and I hope we can do it again thanks Jakob you want to say a word too yeah I, I talked a lot during the first part so I'm just going to thank you all for being here and it was pleasure to to have this tutorial and and I hope you you, you can use some of the skills in the future I would also like to to thank uh, Shell and, and Christopher for the help to, to set uh, all this tutorial and work with the administration part and, uh, and the quiz you had before and the choice and everything you, you did for us. So thank you for, uh, for your help in this. I will let you uh, close the tutorial as you opened it. And then, as I said, we're still here to discuss on Slack for a few minutes if you want. Okay, um, thank you so much uh, for, I, I don't know, time rushes so fast, like it's already three hours and we just started, I don't know at what time, but, but we're so grateful that uh, first of all, you applied and you were patient with us while we were um, going through the selection period and thank you for showing up. We had limited slots and apologies to anyone who was not able to make it. Um, just a reminder, as Sebastian has said, we are here for the next 15 or so. Uh, minutes. So if you have a question, if you, if you have a question you weren't willing to ask openly, feel free to DM um, any of us. Also, I would encourage you people to join us in the Slack community. There's a very good um, hashtag that goes on. I don't know why Sebastian has not mentioned that, but I'll do it for you. Um, <laughs> there's a um, hashtag called um, our special yeah, are special, uh, where questions are, like, if you have a question on um, anything related with spatial analytics in R, you can always ask. It happens tomorrow, Tuesday. I know it's 5 p.m. GMT plus 3, so it's 5 p.m., so it's 2 p.m. UTC. Um, uh, maybe Sebastian can add the, the exact timing, but it's always a safe space where you can ask whichever question you want. It's also a good place to just look at what people are working on. Um, some of us recently started using our special stats and you feel as though we've become gurus or maybe almost gurus. Um, but I think I'm very proud of this community and um, we're happy to have more 
people adopt um, R and spatial analytics. So yeah, I don't think I have much. Thank you to the presenters for being patient with us. It has been a long process since we um, applied to host this tutorial and I'm very thankful it has been a success. As Sebastian had mentioned earlier, we are going to share these materials soon. I'm not sure when, but you'll have them um, soon and feel free to share with others who um, couldn't make it. And please follow uh, the presenters. These people are good folks. I can speak on their behalf. <laughs> Maybe they are going to pay me some commission. But anyway, they are no. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had your hand left no, no for no more. all your friends, okay? So, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, you, that moment oh. floated away last year. <laughs> Okay, um, anyway, but these are cool folks. Anytime you have questions, not even today, not even regarding today's tutorial, anytime ever, if you have anything to, any question on our spatial analytics. And please check out um, Jakub's book. I think he posted it somewhere. It's just spatial computation. Let me try and ping it. Um, it's an amazing book. Um, and I think everyone should go to it. So I'm happy on behalf of um, Chris and I, Nairobi R. Um, we are grateful and see you in social media somewhere talking about our special chat. I would, I would really hope to see someone talk about our special chat from something they've learned from um, this tutorial. It will make us proud. I'm speaking on behalf of the presenters, I'm sure. Uh, but <laughs> it will really make us proud, but no pressure at all. Yeah, that's it from me.